Welcome to Integrity Inspire, your daily dose of inspiration and motivation, featuring the bright and talented members of the Integrity Marketing Group family. Now, here's your host, Integrity co-founder and CEO, Brian W. Adams. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for joining today's Inspire podcast. We are literally graced with having a legend uh, of of our industry on on the call today, and I can't wait uh, to introduce him. Uh, but before that, uh, I wanted to say a couple of weeks back, I sent out a a, um, a video of what happened whenever I got my Polaris Ranger stuck in the mud, and then had to call some friends to get help getting getting me out out you know out of the mud and, and getting them uh, to to come get pull me out of that. And then they got stuck, and then we had to call some more friends, uh, and we finally pulled everything loose and and uh, and got got out. Well, it happened again. Only this time it was my boys. A uh, little four wheeler that got stuck, and I was now the one who got to get them unstuck out of the mess. And then, as as I asked my wife to shoot a quick video because I wanted to put this kind of update out there, just because of something I was thinking about, both of them ended up getting stuck in the mud again, playing in the mud, and their boots got stuck. Uh, and it was a fun um, little time uh, for for my family. So I sent that out to you guys. We're going to be posting that on social media today so please uh like and share it um and and hopefully what what that does is just kind of reminds people that you know even though we're getting stuck or we've got issues or different problems that that uh, there are people here to help and there are people here that um that that can can help us get out of it and you can honestly have fun while you're while you're doing uh that um and I I I couldn't begin to guess how many people today's guest has helped over the course of his long and distinguished career. People that that have gotten stuck in old ways of thinking, people who have gotten stuck in just issues that they've had, problems that they've had, um, and, and, and just people that he's come alongside of to say, hey, let me show you the way out. Lenny Anderson is truly a living legend, an innovator, an entrepreneur, a salesman salesman, and just one of the kings of our industry. He started as an agent all the way back in 1966 and set a lot of production records for a number of different companies. And in 1979, he co-founded Golden Care USA, and eventually uh, settling into the long-term care specialty that really continues to this day. Uh, and combined, Golden Care and AIM, our other partner in Yakima, Washington, which was his other partner, John Wayne's business, um, are the market leaders in selling long-term care insurance in the U.S. today. Lenny is renowned throughout the industry as an influencer and really an industry icon. He's touched so many lives uh, in our business and just a, everybody that's been around him. He's a leader and a mentor, and he's helped others achieve their own success. And there's there's nobody that I've seen, honestly, that has been so encouraging and so really, really uh, such a cheerleader for other people's success as Lenny. This guy has a ton of stories and um this could be we could do an entire week of inspire podcast with just Lenny because there is such a, a, an amount a, a incredible amount of things that we can learn uh from from Lenny and uh, all that he's been through um and it, it is really and truly an honor to welcome Lenny to the podcast uh, thank you, Lenny, for joining us. I am uh, I'm just humbled that you would agree to this and uh, join us, and I'm really humbled to be your partner, my friend. Thank you very much, Brian. That is that is really quite a send off, and uh, uh, you make me very humble saying the things that you said. Is just uh, I I don't know how to what to say and how to answer that. But uh, thank you so very very much. So, but it's been 
It's been a wonderful, wonderful ride, and it's still going on and on. So it's just been great. Thank you so well, very much. And thank all the Integrity Partners, uh, what we've made, you, what you and you and uh, Tom and Mike uh, started to uh, put in Mike uh, uh, White, putting uh, you know all of it together for us. And it's just been a great ride. Well, well, I appreciate that. Lenny, you've heard me say this a lot, and, and I, I, I truly mean it. I've told a lot of people this, um, that if there's one person in business that I could grow up and, and emulate um, and, and be like, it would be Lenny Anderson. And uh, the way that you're, you just, the spirit that you have, the encouragement for others that you have, the tenacity that you've got, the just entrepreneurial brain, and I mean, you're one of the smartest people I've ever met, Lenny. Uh, and I've also said I would never negotiate against you again because when we went through our partnership negotiation, um, you know, most people will make you feel better by letting them win one or two points. I didn't. I, I came out of there without winning a single point, um, and uh, and that's fine because. We're, here we are today, and I'm just, um, man, I'm just, I'm just proud to be, uh, tr proud to be your your partner. So, so Lenny, um, listen. One of the things I love about this podcast, I love about this time. When we first started this, and we talked about this on uh, yesterday's podcast. Whenever we first started this podcast, um, it's call. It was just, hey, how do we kind of set a time that we can come together and just all kind of get on the same page and get our day started because we're working remote. Um, and, and it, it, uh, it was one of those things. It was, it was just, how do we just kind of get that rhythm going? Right. And what's happened and what's transpired from that is, is something just incredibly special. Um, it's given us a time for us to get to know each other and, and get to know our leaders and our partners and just the people that a lot of people might not get a chance to meet. So we've got, listen, Lenny, we have, I, I've traveled around to pretty much every office, and I've gotten to know a lot of the young people. The people who are, are, are really making this business special and, and going to make this business special for the next 50 years, the young group that we've got of leaders I would put them up against anybody in the world. I mean, they, these are entrepreneurial, sharp, great heart, servant-minded people. Um, and and the, the guys and gals that we have that work with us and are partners of ours are, uh, are, are just the best of the best. Um, and and I, one of the things that I'm excited about today is that that uh, they get a chance. To, th these are people who might not ever have the chance to sit down and have a cup of coffee with you or other leaders that we've got here at Integrity and get to get to know know people. Um, in, in the old days, I mean, in the in like medieval times, right? There was kind of this idea of apprenticeship. Um, that I think the world's lost because of the efficiency that's, that we've gained and just the the speed that, that the world is in. But in, even back in, in medieval times, you had like a blacksmith that would have an apprentice that they would teach all their trade to. And then at some point they would hand it off, right? Um, and, and the world, I think, is missing that kind of apprenticeship opportunity uh, today. Um, and so one of the things that, that, like I said, I'm so excited about is – even just having a moment to learn from our other leaders like yourself for all of our incredible young leaders um, that, that will be able to have just a moment to, to learn about what it took for you to become successful, how you guys did it in the quote, good old days. Um, and, and, uh, and just learn from a legend that they would have never had this opportunity. So, Lenny, thanks again for, for being willing to do this, first and foremost, um, and, and be open to share some of, of your insights to, to help us to the next generation, to wherever that, that leads us, uh, which I don't know about you, that gets me really fired up. Yeah, no, absolutely. You've got uh, a lot of great, great young blood uh, in the organization, and that really uh, is what's going to build it and grow it. 
it's fantastic. I mean, with what with what there is today in all the talent, uh, and musical talent too. That's really good. They're talented in a lot <laughs> of different ways. A lot of ways. <laughs> That's true. That's true. Well, hey, I mean, and and you've got them in your office. I mean, you've got some incredibly, incredibly talented people. You're a family business. You had Todd. You had Lori, your daughter and son, working with you. And now you even have your granddaughter, Jessica Felstead, who's also an incredible team member at Golden Care. So this is a family business, but also this is one of those things that, that if we build it right, it can last generations. So that's uh, that's exciting. So, hey, Lenny, let's get started um, because I, I've got a lot of things I want to cover with you. This, you were anytime we're ever together, you're the one guy that I want to sit down and just get to know better and to learn from, uh, because I think that there's just so much to, to gain here. Um, tell us a little bit about how you, I mean, you were literally one of the smartest people I've ever met. Uh, one of the best people I've ever met. Um, how did you get, how did you get your start? Tell, tell people just kind of a little bit about your background and kind of where you got started. Well, Brian, uh, and thank you again for all everything you're saying. It's wonderful. Uh, actually, coming into the business, uh, I had uh, left high school at 15 years old. I uh, decided to uh, work for my brother-in-law at that time. And uh, basically what we did is we did uh, route service with uh, uh, taking a, a truck and putting sandwiches and hot food on it and delivering it. And uh, so... I did that starting off instead of going back to high school. Uh, that's exactly what I did. And I, we built routes to uh, sell, sell food. And the way that we actually did it is that we started off and uh, we would follow our competition around for a couple of days, write down their time, what time they got there, uh, what time they left, all the different stops. On the third day, we just beat them to it, and we gave away all of our food to show them that our food is much better, <laughs> and, 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 and so and, and so so to stop away from them. So that's the way I really started at 15 years old, and and uh, at at one time they were pretty upset with me, and I had to have a, another fellow, a big guy, uh, ride shotgun with me just to protect me because <laughs> they, they had made some threats against me. So you were, that, that you were such of, a good salesman. You were such a good salesman at 15. That you had to have a bodyguard. You're you're the first 15 year old other than a paparazzi guy that yeah, I knew yeah. had a bodyguard. Yeah, well, oh my gosh. Thanks, but but that, that's that's the way I actually got started in that, and uh, so I just did several <laughs> different things after that, and uh, I got into uh, the home improvement business down the road. I had uh, one time I had my own truck until the union stopped me, and they said I can't do what I'm doing because I wasn't a union member. And then at that time I went into uh, selling home improvements. And uh, I'd done that for uh, some time, and I had a good friend that uh, come and talk to me one day about getting into the insurance business. His name was Tom Crotty, and uh, extremely good friend, and relied a lot about what he said. But he said, you know, Lenny, I went in the insurance business, and you got to come and see us. And I said, Tommy, I said, I, I'm sorry, but uh, the only insurance guys that I know have champagne taste and beer income. And I was making a pretty good living selling home improvements at that time, remodeling and siding and doors and all the different things. So, so I kind of kept trying to push him off, but he uh, kept after me. Thank goodness. Thank God. And he kept after me and after me. So I finally said, well, he's just come and ride with me. Just come and ride with me. See what I do. I said, okay. So just trying to, you know, take care of it and be done with it. So that day we left at six o'clock in the morning. We got back at 12 o'clock at night, right around 12 o'clock, drove 300 and some miles and made $37. <laughs> so I wasn't really too excited, too excited about the insurance business. I said, well, it's just about what I thought it was. And uh, so anyway, he said, well, it's just kind of a really an off day. And I said, well, you know, I don't know. So anyway, he said, you'll have to come with me another day. And so that went on for another three weeks. And uh, I kept putting them off, putting them off, putting them off. And and uh, doing what I was doing. And uh, finally, I just said, he kept asking me, I felt so bad for him. I said, okay, Tommy, I got nothing to do for the next couple of days. There's nothing, no appointments, no nothing. I'll ride with you one more time. And then that, I thought that was going to be it. Well, that day we did the same thing, worked our six to 12 at night, driving 300 miles. And 
Uh, we covered covered a lot of ground living in Minnesota and started selling business in Wisconsin and just covered a lot of ground, put a lot of miles on. But that day, we, he made $130. And after thinking about it in, in that part, I said, you know, the thing that I liked about it was that we worked two days and every day we made money. One day we didn't make much money, but back in 1966, when you made $100 a day, that was a lot of money. And uh, that, so I said, well, you know, I want to give it a try. And at that time, you could work on a permit, uh, an insurance permit, and uh, you didn't have to go take your test first. And that's what I had. They had filed that, which unbeknownst to myself at the time, I guess I signed the papers, but that was it. So the next day I went out myself, and that day I made $147. And I worked the same hours, drove the same miles, did everything. But uh, from that time on, I just really never looked back. And that's uh, every day you worked, you made money. And that's what I liked about where the home improvement business was not that way. Plus, I was working seven days a week at that. So this way, I said, well, I can only, if I, I only work six days a week, I would still make a lot of money in the insurance business. And that's, uh, that's what the whole big start of it right there. But I drug into the business, but it, thank God I was. So thank, man, thank man. God you stuck with it. It's kind of like, like Jim Sweeney was talking about. Jim's a, another great friend of ours and also one of the most successful guys I know. And, and, uh, and, and Jim was another one that just kept seeing failure, failure, failure. In fact, most of us, Tom Sheath was talking about this, right? Just kind of like, I don't yep. know about this. And and just because you stuck with it, you never gave up. It turned out to be an incredible career and created an incredible life. Now, Lenny, I, I got to I gotta go back. Um, you hit on something that, that's really interesting. I, uh, you know, you hear so much, and I'm, I'm a big believer in education. Uh, I don't have a great education, to be honest, but I'm a big believer that education helps and there's nothing wrong with it. But you hear a lot of time that, that uh, I mean, you got to, you know, I don't know, people, if you don't have a great education, you're not going to be successful or whatever that is. But ironically, some of the people who, most of the people that, um, that are the most successful that I know don't have a college degree. It's, it's really incredible. I mean, as you start thinking about this, and I, I'm not going to name names right now, but a lot of our most successful partners um, and the most successful people I know in, in our business don't have a, don't have a college degree, which is, is amazing. So we got a lot of young people on here that, that even might think, well, I don't have the best education. I don't have this education. But, but you, you said you dropped out of high school when you were 15. That's like your, your freshman year, right? Yeah. I actually, uh, I, was, I was going in 10th grade where I was going. And uh, yeah, so, so I, I, went, I went through nine and that was it. So, but, Lenny, uh, I, I'm, I'm not kidding. I'm not kidding, Lenny. I, and I'm, I'm not trying to say this just because we're on this call. You were literally one of the smartest people, most successful people I have ever met in my life. Um, and, and that just proves another philosophy is if you don't give up and, and, and it's not about your circumstance in life. Um, I mean, people are born into all different issues or different things or go through different struggles. It's what you make of it. And, and that is, it, it, it's certainly an indicator, but it doesn't mean that it is the indicator of success if you have a great degree. <laughs> um, and, and I, I, uh, man, I just, I just love that about you. I, I was, I was meeting on wall street with some, and Steve Segrist, our CFO was, was with us. And this guy was uh, telling me, and this big banker guy was telling me about his, you know, went to Harvard and how smart he was. And just, it was, I don't know, something about it kind of rubbed me wrong. Nothing. If you went to Harvard, nothing against that. I, I wish I'd gone to Harvard. I there's no way they would let me into Harvard. But this guy's like just bragging about going to Harvard. And I said, man, that's incredible. He went to Harvard. And he goes, well, I got two degrees from Harvard. I uh, got my undergrad and my MBA from Harvard. And I, I literally had just taken enough. I just had kind of enough. And I go, holy crap, man. I went to Texas Tech. I can't believe, I can't imagine what I could have accomplished if I'd gotten to Harvard. Like I was just kind of like, screw you, man. Like, uh, come on, buddy. 
Um, but but it, it, what I was thinking of is all the most successful people, people who are way more successful than that guy, um, you know, didn't even go to college or even sometimes high school. So, um, and I just I love that part of of your story. And then and then you switched and became a tin man. I mean, if if anybody's ever watched Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross, and some of the great shows of the day, I mean, that's what you were doing. Is it? It was a tin man, right? Yeah, that's basically it, right there. Yeah, that we is, did is, it is, modeling is, and a lot of tin, uh, and a lot of vinyl, vinyl and tin. It, if anybody wants to watch a great movie about cells, like old school cells, uh, it's where the quote "coffee is for closers" came from. ABC always be closing. There's so many great quotes out of that. Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross is is a is a great one. But man, Lenny, I I love anytime I hear stories about people selling in those those uh, good old days. It man, it sounds like a whole different world. How you guys you you would you said y'all would drive 300 miles. Like people don't realize like 300 miles, and that was. Man, that was before cruise control, right? I mean, that's, that's a <laughs> yeah. long time. That's before power steering and cruise control. And you guys are driving 300 miles. So tell us about it. You would get in the home. What was like the sales presentation? What was, what was that like? Just take us through what it was like in 1966 and how you became a number one producer and kind of what you did there. Well, it, it, you know, it's so different, Brian, than it is today. It's just remarkable. And uh, basically is what we would do. We'd come into a new area, into a new town, smaller towns, and we would start canvassing and door knocking and talking to people, trying to sell a product, uh, which was Medicare at that time. And then once you do that, you'd make friends with them and where they believed in you, it was trusted with you. And then at that time, you would say, uh, if I ask you a question, uh, you know, you can say no or whatever it is, but we're really looking to contact all the people in the area. So, and we're looking to be able to use some good comfortable quarters for our now we would call telemarketer to come in and make some calls. And, uh, uh, from, uh, you know, during the day in the morning and then leave about noon or so. And uh, could I ask you if, uh, if you'd be, you know, any interest in let us do in something like that, be, be more than willing to pay you or do whatever. Uh, and uh, they'd say, well, yes and no, I asked some questions, whatever, you answer them. And then your next question was, is that uh, uh, you're on a party line, I assume. Are you on the two party line, the four party line or the six party line? And at that time, you know, you had different rings and some of the people probably might not know what party lines were. But yeah, explain, you, explain what a party line is because yeah. there's a lot of people on here that don't understand what party line, what a party line is. My grandparents had a party line, which was, yeah. I, I remember that, but uh, most people may not remember that. So tell us about what a party line was. Well, a party line is that they, there's one line <clears throat> and that two different families or two different areas could use. A four party line was four families. A six was a six, and everybody had a different ring. So when the telephone rang, like uh, you know, they'd have a short ring, a long ring, uh, things like that. That's the way they did a beeper ring, and that's the way they answered the phone. They knew it was for them at that time. But of course, you know what we were trying to do is contact all the people in the area, and uh, a four-party line just was pretty impossible to make it work because there's always somebody picking up the phone and and uh, listening in or trying to make a call, of course. And so we always said, well, they got to only just have a two-party line to really make it work. And then we'd contact the other party and say that this is what we're going to be doing. Is that okay with them? And they would say, yeah, or no, or whatever it was. And so then at that time, we would use, uh, t today it's like uh, working from home. At that time, it was working from somebody else's home. So <laughs> that is what, that is what we'd do. I'd Steven, my hold on, hold on, hold on, Steven, hold on, hold on, Steven Prince, hold on, Steven Prince just texted me. He said, "This is working from home, but not your home." That is <laughs> right, exactly. So, so a party, a party line for everybody. It is you. You shared your phone line. This is a landline. This is before cell phones, all that. You would share your phone line with your neighbors because everybody couldn't afford to get your own phone line. 
And so I remember that growing up as as a, as a kid. My grandparents shared it with their neighbors. It was two party, and and you'd pick up sometimes a call, and the other neighbor would be talking on the phone, and you know, and then you know it'd kind of be awkward, and you'd either listen in or hang up. Um, you, you should hang up, but uh, but you would literally like this is this is mind blowing. So just think about this, ladies and gentlemen. If you're you you, you get into a home. And what you said was, Lenny, you build a relationship, right? I mean, this is what Correct. one of the yeah. constants of all these these different calls is you build a relationship with somebody. You you get to know them, you get to work with them, and then and then you say you sell them a product. You go, hey, thank you so much. I really appreciate that. Now I would like to leave somebody at your house to to make make phone calls so I can go sell more products. I mean, that's not exactly how you would do it, but yeah. that's what you're talking about, right? Pretty, pretty close, yeah. From nine to one, oh every, my God. four hours a day that they'd come in there talk and a, use their house. Talk about a I salesman. Talk about a salesman. Hey, listen, I'm going to sell you this product. Thank you very much. Now I need to sell you on the fact that I need to borrow your house. And this guy's going to, so the guy, well, I guess, would he bring food or would they like give him a sandwich or would he go to their bathroom? Like what was this? Like oh, how no. awkward could it be to, yeah. uh, to be <laughs> that guy? It, it, it was so <sighs> different back at that time, Brian. And, and the people were absolutely wonderful. And of course, you know, we always brought them uh, donuts or cookies or pies or uh, maybe uh, a gift certificate from a fa favorite diner or whatever it was. Always took good care of them and treated them, of course, absolutely great, you know. Because it's just, and we realized what they were actually giving up. But they were great about it, really. I mean, they would make sure, like, uh, I had this one uh, telemarketer, he's 72 years old, and I had to pick him up every day and drive him because he had a DUI back at that time. And uh, But he was so good. I mean, I sold so much business from him. It was just amazing. And the people loved him. I mean, once you'd get in there and get to know him and create that relationship. But, I mean, they'd make him sandwiches. They'd cook for him. It's amazing. And but that's the way the people were back at that time. Today I don't think that would work quite as well. You know? Yeah, but. probably. Probably. I don't I don't think I don't think Robin, my wife, would let uh let that guy stick around all day. She'd probably be a little frustrated if uh if I agreed to that. So my gosh, Lenny. You you guys so how different? I mean that part's really different, let's be straight. Um you know, the the there's there's this 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 the saying like man the good old days you know back in the good old days we uh whatever right uh yep that's How, right that's like the good I, old I days. mean honestly that sounds a lot harder than it it is today like right now you can buy uh, facebook leads you can buy direct mail leads i mean i, I mean it, it, the good old days amazing. don't <laughs> and you don't have to drive 300 miles every every day right no, boy, is that a true story? And today you can sit in your own home. You've got e apps. You've got a telephone. You you sell it over the internet. I mean, it's so so much different and so much easier. Well, believe me, it's still not just a slam dunk deal. All these all of our agents work hard, and we really appreciate what they do. That's for sure. But it's just so different and so much so much easier. I mean, contact so many more people than the way that I started off doing it. It's just like night and day difference. And uh, usually, you know, way back some time ago when we were really turning the people on to, uh, you know, phoning and calling and doing it over the telephone and that, that we seen agents uh, that was actually doing the running before, uh, by the time they got onto the phone system and started working it down, this is even in the long time, the long-term care business, they would double their income, if not triple their income, because they contacted so many more people and they had more time because it wasn't driving in between. So today, yeah. it's uh, I mean, it's so good today. We've got it so good. I mean, we're definitely in a, a problem as today, and we're working through it, and I congratulate everybody for doing that because it's wonderful and just to get done what we're doing and get out of where we're at. But uh, it's, back at that time, you'd be out of business. Today you're not. You're making money. You've got a job. It's amazing stuff today. Yeah, that's I good. think that's Lenny. I think that's so important. Um, that there, there's a there's a moment that 
I, I mean, listen, I've felt this way. Um, I mean, you, you kind of feel some, I got a five-year-old. Sometimes he pouts and says that's not fair and all that type stuff. And with all of this type of stuff, I felt like that some, I, I'll be honest. I, I felt like, man, you know, this isn't fair. Like why am, you know, like we've been doing all this stuff and now we're having to, you know, stay at home. And I mean, you kind of feel sorry for yourself. Um, you know, that's kind of human nature, but there's also this kind of tendency to remember back and go, man, back in those days, and they had it easy back in those days, they, you know, had it good today. Like, thank God this didn't happen five or 10 years ago because we wouldn't have had the technology. We wouldn't have the phone system. Honestly, the integrity platform and all of us working together and collaborating we wouldn't have been able to do that. Um, I mean, thank God this is, you know, today we're we're actually thriving. Uh, whereas in the past, I mean, you could have literally, literally shut you down. Now, Lenny, you, you talked a little bit about long-term care. You mentioned long-term care. I mean, you, are, you and John Wayne are known as the kings of the long-term care industry. You guys have built just, I, I mean, single-handedly almost, you guys have created uh some of the leading products in in the industry you and mike lynch and david wayne and john hennessy and a bunch of other guys that, that were part of y'all's team and i, I mean I, I don't want to live leave out tim and tom and tom i mean over uh, with your team and, and the others i mean you, you guys have just amazing teams um that that have done such great things uh, but but you guys you you find you you get locked in on the long term care business and and really said this is where I'm going to make my mark, um, and you have helped so many people that will never know who Lenny Anderson is uh, or John Wayne is. But man, you guys um, you guys have helped so many people and Americans with those planning needs. What what was it about long term care that got you so excited about that and wanted to help people? Well, you know, back in 1983, they passed the DRGs, which really said at that time, this is a true long-term care program. So John Wayne and myself met each other about 1980 at a different company and got to be friends. And, and down the road, we started doing some business together. And uh, we decided to get into the long-term care market and, uh, and, and write that because we thought it'd be a wide open, great market to be in. And what it did, uh, people needed the product and it's brand new in the business. And that part. So John and myself, we actually started at that time writing long, a true long-term care program, 1984. That's when the first one was written. Uh, you know, that was actually called long-term care. So, but we decided because you know a, the open market at that time. And then down the road, we found out just what a great product it was, and what the persistency was. It was so strong and so good. I mean, for us, for the marketer, for the agent, because you're. The persistency on it's like 98, 99%. Once you sold it, they have stayed there forever and ever. But the bad, the sad part was it was not that great for the carriers out there uh, because it's too persistent. It's too persistent and they hadn't priced it right and they took more risks than they could. So, so it eventually become a tough business. But John and myself, we've always stayed in it and, and because we knew what it was and thinking that We'd break it through and just, uh, you know, just focus on it and stayed after it. And uh, and as we're doing right today, doing the same thing. Uh, we love the business. We think everybody needs a long-term care program. Uh, just just part part of your life that you need it. I mean, people spend so much of their their life savings uh, in one of these homes or whatever, or for home health care, whatever it is that they need. And you know, two out of three people is going to need it sometime in their life of some sort. You know, which is really saying something. So we love the coverage to do for the people, and we love the income that we could make, and it was lucrative, it was good, and uh, we've been very fortunate and tied good, good product. We designed the product uh, to our liking, and uh, we had a great team that we did it with. We had our own actuary and things, and uh, the last one that we've done was Mutual of Omaha. You know, we've. Uh, uh, create a relationship with them, and they had just had a, a great, great program, and they're a great company, and uh, we're still writing it right today, you know, all the way through. So it's been just wonderful, you know. So it's just that we're just not seeing enough people. It's got to be a very tough business as far as 
the product, the premiums, uh, the underwriting procedures, and a lot of agents got out of the market uh, for just those reasons. And so the market is not what it used to be, but still a great market. And we're, we've got some programs uh, at our office that there's, there's a way that, uh, you know, somebody gives us, uh, you know, a name of some folks that want some questions answered or the agent wants some questions answered. Boy, we're all over to help them and do whatever we possibly can for them uh, at Golden Care. We've got some great, great people, great team right there to help them or actually write it and uh, do, do something with them. We've got different ways we can do that and uh, do a referral uh, compensation with them. You know, so it work, can really work out. But it's a very needed product. Yeah, it, so, it really is. It, yeah. it really is. And, and, and that's what I love about the Integrity Platform is there's a lot of our businesses that don't really have any, any exposure into the long-term care market or really – they get asked about it a lot, but they don't know how to sell it. They don't know where to go to have the right product. Um, and, and, and the fact that, that you guys have programs that can help if, 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 if one of our team members has a, an agent that has a long-term care product need or a client that has a product need that we can help support them. And so give Golden Care or American Independent Marketing or AIM a call uh, and we can, we can make sure that, um, those clients are taken care of because it's all about the client first. And uh, and foremost, uh, for sure. So we'll make sure that we we will help you and and uh, take care of them. And there's nobody I would trust more on long-term care insurance than John Wayne and Lenny Anderson and Mike Lynch and that team, uh, for sure. Well, Lenny, we are running out of time, and I yeah. I could, like I said before, my brother, I could I could do this all day. Um, I I, uh, I in fact. I think we could we could uh we could do this all week uh with with uh, the short the stories that you have um and I just appreciate just all that you have brought to the industry the path that you've you've uh cleared for people like me and so many others um we wouldn't be here without you my friend and uh I love you, and I, I I ask you to give Miss Jackie a big hug for me, but uh, I just want you to know how much I personally appreciate you, and I know I speak on behalf of all of our partners here at Integrity. How much we all admire you, so thank you, my friend. We now we now we got to get John Wayne on one of these too. You're gonna have to help me yep. get John yep, on no. one of these. No, and and Brian, again, I just want to thank you for everything and. Uh... Uh, you know, you finally beat me up, and uh, I got into integrity. It's been the best thing I've ever done in my entire career in the business. Uh, it's been such a great ride and such a great company. And integrity, the name of integrity means a lot to me, Brian. And we talked a lot about that when we were negotiating. And because I wanted my people to be taken care of and my top people and all of my, my employees. They're, they're the Golden Care family, and you've done a fantastic job doing that with integrity and i can't applaud you and thank you enough thank you lenny you have some of the best people in the world and we're proud to be partners thank you everybody for joining today lenny man i love you buddy thank you for uh you Brian. thank you for joining you. us man um, thank, thank you much all right everybody have a great day look forward to uh talking to you tomorrow we'll, we'll have another great Inspire Podcast. You guys all have a blessed day. Thanks for sticking around a little longer today. 